I nearly went bankrupt. Mm. I actually embrace my trials. Like I literally sit and I know Allah is watching me the closest right mm. now. Two parts of faith that are extremely important. One is shukur, which is gratitude. And the other is sabr, which is patience. Mm. I have no one from my dad's side now. I have no one from my mom's side now, mm. but I'm still living. I'm living for the people I have now. Mm. We truly will never know what's best for us ever because we're limited. For me, navigating marriage was pretty hard in the first year. There's things that you have to change about yourself. Life is temporary, but eternity is what we are aiming for. Mm. SubhanAllah. How would you say Islam helped you specifically as a person? So for me, I think it just grounded me a bit more. Nice. For like, I felt like without Islam, I was floating. Like I was floating, didn't know what to do. I would do whatever my heart desired, like whatever I desired. Mm. But your desires always take you down a path of that gratification of something you just want to do in the moment because you're either bored, you're, you're, you're feeling a certain type of way. So you'll always want to satisfy your need during that that period. You don't even care about the consequences after. And I just feel like I had no stability in my life. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I'll do whatever. So like, you know, people say to themselves that like, Ilah means like the, your your core foundation of what you worship in, in your heart. Yeah. This is a love for some people, but this could be different things for other people. Some people, their Ilah is money. Mm -hmm. So money will drive their decisions. It doesn't matter how good the decision is, how bad the decision is, money will drive it. Some people's ilah is their status or their, their fame or their ego. They'll always use that to drive their decisions. If you really want your ilah to be Allah, it's you're, allow, you're, you're putting aside your desires and you're allowing that intention in your heart to drive your decisions. Mm -hmm. That could come in a form of sacrifice. That could come in a form of you just being content and patient, patient with Allah. Mm -hmm. There's like, I was reading the, yesterday, there's two like, two parts of faith that are extremely important. One is shukur, which is gratitude. And the other is sabr, which is patience. Mm. During the times of good, you're practicing shukur, mm. meaning you're just grateful. Mm. And you have to focus on being grateful because if you're not, it comes as a test. Mm. In the times of hardship, you're focusing your sabr. You're focusing on being patient mm. because for any human being in this world, there's only two phases. You're either being grateful in the moment because you're blessed or you're being patient in the moment because you're being tested. It's just the one or the two. And both of them have their own tests. When you're being patient, you're still getting rewarded for it, right? Like every moment that your heart aches, you're getting rewarded for, for, for it. And every moment Allah blesses you and you're constantly being grateful and remembering like, this isn't my doing, mm. Allah gave it to me. Mm. You're being rewarded for it. But both can also turn into a test. For shukur, you're never grateful. You're saying, I did this. Mm. I opened this business. Mm. I got this money. Mm. It's all determined for you already. Mm. And then on the suburb side, you get it tested and you say, why me? So both of those are the two wings of, of faith sometimes, like shukur and gra and uh, suburb. Mm. So mm. I was just reading that the other day. That was but beautiful. I'm sure, so just based on that, like I'm sure you had to go through both of those phases, right? Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's hear about it. Like where did that, like how did you find um, navigating through both because some people it's hard for them to be grateful and that's actually a test right like you have so much it's hard for you to be grateful and for some people most of us it's hard for us to have patience patience is more common than being grateful mm. so for me it was um weirdly difficult but because i've always been um the blessed one by allah so it so it has never occurred to me that it can be hard without you know proper uh, amount of money and stuff at your disposal mm. so after my dad passed away i had to take over the business and that's when i realized unless you're proper aware of what you are or uh, what you're handling it can be ruined and um at some point uh i nearly went bankrupt Mm. I nearly went bankrupt, uh, financials weren't going as well, uh, the business wasn't going as well and um, I was going through hardship financially. Um, let's say it went for uh, a year or so, so I was, when I was going through this phase, I realized that this, this is somewhat test for me again, mm. but this is a different kind of test, test of 
Sabur. Sabur. Mm. And that's when I got even closer to Allah because I realized it's not me, it's His plan. Mm. And His plan is the best plan for us. So I went through it, I believed in Him and I kept praying, I kept asking for what I need in life, but I also asked Him what's best for me, mm. when it's best for me. I didn't ask for, give me this right now. Mm. I asked for, give me at your best time, mm. but let me go through this with firm belief. It, it went for a long time, but it taught me the value of life, the value of friendship, the value of companionship. Yeah. Because when you're going through a hard time, people leave you. Mm. But not a single person that I had in my life left me. And that was beautiful because I had nothing at that point. Yeah. But Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me enough now. Uh, so I'm, I'm extremely happy and extremely content for my life and everything I have and every everyone I have in my yeah. life because they also went through this phase with me. And it's beautiful to see how Allah has, Allah gives you whatever you your heart desire, but in right time. Mm. That's so, that's so beautiful. You know, you know what you just said? I'm so glad you used the word contentment because in the Quran, it literally says that the formula for a good life is to do good deeds while having faith. Exactly. While having faith. And that, like, you know what? I just feel so grateful because we literally get the blueprint of exactly what we need to, to be successful here and in the hereafter. But the reason why there's emphasis on while having faith and why that directly yeah. correlates to what you just said is because you have to remember who are you doing good deeds for, mm. right? Your intention, it matters. It's not that you were trying to figure out how to get from bankruptcy to, to success. You trusted Allah to get you to success. You, had, you were doing everything for the sake of Allah because of that. You put your whole trust in Allah. You were patient for Allah. And that is literally the formula for success. I find that the thing that Islam did for me is I used to be so self-reliant. I thought I had to be in control. I needed to know when to do something, how to do something, when to do something who to do it with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The second I started to put my trust in Allah, everything just became so much more peaceful. Doesn't mean I was always successful, but I was okay exactly where I was, always. And that is such a gift. So if there's anyone that's watching and you're not in a place in your life where you think you should be, whether you're in school, you're not in your right program, you're, so your business isn't growing or you're, you're not married yet, whatever it is, put your trust in Allah because everything is already written. Everything is already written. Allah already knows exactly when you're gonna get married, exactly when you'll find success in your business, exactly when you'll have kids. So just trust Allah and enjoy the journey. And you'll literally find peace no matter where you are. The ups and downs will not matter because you know where you're going. Alhamdulillah. It's beautiful. So I'm, I'm glad you said that, man. Oh, Content. It's yeah. not happiness. It's I just contentment. want to be a part of the party here and also add on to why that is so important. So another thing I read up on and I realized after reading this is we have five prayers a day, right? And within these five times that you pray, it's all spread out the prayers, right? Because there's intervals that you're not praying, but there's intervals of time that you're invested in this world mm. that might cause you stress, that might cause you pain that might cause you sadness there's so many things that can change in the middle of all of these five prayers right there's a reason why we go into sujood after every during every prayer mm. is because when you go into sujood you let all of the stress fall off your shoulder and onto the hands of allah because he can manage it right why does that happen every day throughout the day until you go to sleep before you even wake up and do any task you pray fajr and you put your head down and you let your worries fall off mm. Because you've accumulated so many worries in these intervals of time yeah. that Allah has so much mercy on us that even at nighttime, if we even had a bad dream, that worry he even wants to say, let me take care of it. So all these sujus that we do throughout the day, it's like you're accumulating worries when you're doing your business, when you're at work, this. Mm. But Allah says, reset, come back, put your head down, let me take the worries. Mm. But that's where it's like you have trust in Allah and his plan and his capabilities mm. so that you could find contentment throughout your day. Mm. Mm. That is beautiful. Bro, it's crazy. Like all these things that you just, I just read up 
on and it's just like it just makes sense when you're you're opening your mind and just reading it you know yeah. it all adds up exactly everything everything literally everything adds up and that's honestly why i love islam so much because i remember before i reverted the the thought of praying five times a day seems so intimidating and just so just like too much it's like five times really because before i reverted i used to just pray when i wanted to and oftentimes it was at night but elm what you said is so true you need to pray more than five times a day mm. because the the levels of stress that comes into your life it's it's non-stop non -stop. but it's a reset it literally just grounds you and it sustains you until you go to sleep you're so right man yeah so now five times honestly does not seem enough it does not seem enough at all exactly subhanallah because the muslim's iman is always fluctuating like we're never gonna have high levels of iman throughout our lives though. yes but that's why allah says sorry i don't want to misquote but i think it was a hadith or it was in the quran but there's a saying where you're expected to have your Iman fluctuate because there's so many factors in your day to day that can make sure. you feel good, make you feel strong, make you feel um, spiritual, things like that, right? So as a human being, you're always going to fluctuate. Like a feeling always fluctuates. Uh, an idea of worship stays consistent. So for example, like the feeling of sadness, it's just a feeling. It's, it's, it's not like it's a permanent feeling. It's a feeling that will eventually change into happiness or excitement and then you forget about it's whatever feeling is up top that takes dominance right so the feeling of sadness is always there the feeling of misery is there the feeling of happiness is there i genuinely feel this is from my personal experience i was always running away from feelings of being sad and feelings of being hurt i always wanted happiness excitement but i realized like those two feelings can only give you so much to understand this life. Like, there's only so much you're aware of. Whereas, the feeling of sadness, the feeling of hopelessness, the feeling of um, aloneness, like being alone in, like, isolation. All of these three feelings, they give you so much more as a person to, like, think about. Mm. And Allah would have never given us trials if those feelings didn't have mm. huge benefits mm. to it. Because moments of sadness, moments of loss, despair are the only moments to get you to Allah. And I always think about this, for example, like the loss that we had, that was the only way for us to get closer to Allah. If, if literally you could picture it as another way that if Allah has never taken away things that we love so much, we would enjoy this world with them, with that, with yeah. this thing. But we would at the end of the day, we wouldn't even be with them forever because we wouldn't even get Jannah mm. because we'd never understand the value of being close to Allah. Mm. So what he does out of his mercy is he forces a hardship on, in your life because he knows that person is per fine. Mm. That person is gone to Allah, Jannah. But now it's on you. Like, where are you going to go? That test brought you back to Allah so that you two, you three, you four, you and that thing you love can so much eternity. can spend eternity there. And he... Allah always says in the Quran, I know which you do, don't know. And at the end of the day, there's nothing that Allah wants to harm. He does everything for our benefit. Because mm. why, why else would He create us? Mm. There's no exactly. reason for Him to harm us. Mm. So everything we're looking at is harm. It's like the quote that I love the most in the Quran. You may feel like something is good for you, even though it's not. And Allah knows what's best for you, even if you think it's not. Mm. So, I may have said that wrong, but like, Allah... Essentially, Allah knows what you need the most. Even if in this world it feels sour, it's prickly, it's thorny. And last thing I'll say, I don't want to ramble, but our Prophet, peace be upon him, said that for a Muslim, like a believer, even if the smallest of thorns, like a little like thorn, yeah. pricks a Muslim, it is not for any other thing that Allah is trying to remove or expiate some of the sins for him. Mm. And he used the example of a thorn. Mm. So imagine, like, if Allah's not trying to hurt you even that much and He's rewarding you for something that's out of your control, mm. why in the world would you get punished mm. for something? Or why would you get put through a test for no good reason? Mm. True. Very you know, like, true. You know what that shows you? That shows you that Allah wants us to go to Jannah. He's 100%. making it so easy for us to go to Jannah. And I think that is, that's why they call, that's why one of His names is Al-Karim. He's literally the most generous. 
He wants for us something that we don't even see badly and gave us the blueprint. He made it easy. All you have to do is just repent, have faith. Like he gave us all the tools hmm. because he wants us to go so bad. So honestly, yeah, that's why what Islam in a nutshell, what it's done is it allowed us to have the most successful life possible across the board. True. But speaking on success, something that I really think is not talked about enough and that's success in this life yeah. as well because what i've noticed is that it's not wrong to be successful in this life it's not wrong to to even strive to be the best that you can possibly be even financially mm. because the more you have the more you can give which ends up being a form of worship yep right but can you speak about what's one what success means to you but then also maybe describe how you came to be where you are right now because you are the most humble person i have ever met and i do not say that lightly we have the same blood we have the same blood hey, i hey, just want to say just i'm talking about this man right here you are so humble humble but i think there's but i think there's benefits in speaking about your success one for inspiration but two to show people that it's sunna to try to be successful as you can so whatever that means to you, take that question as whatever you want to take it, but just speak about it, man. Success is, for me, success is like a test given by Allah. It's, it's, not, it's more, more like a test than a reward because when we get something as a reward, we take it as a result of our own doing. Mm -hmm. But if you consider it as a test, you feel like doing even more. Mm -hmm to keep this in your life. So for me, when I was getting better financially, I thought this must be another test. I have to keep up with my faith and I have to keep up what I love doing. And what I loved, what I always loved doing was to be there for my family, to be there for a lost creation, not just human beings, but the animals, but the plants, for the world, for the universe we are living in. Be that a temporary, but we have to be there so we know we are doing our part. Mm. So when I started um, getting better financially, I realized that this is another test for me to do or to keep doing what I was doing. Because if I'm getting better financially, that means I'm doing something right. Mm. And I need to keep this up. Mm. And that actually gave me so much peace in here yeah. that I felt like, yes, I am on the right track. I need to keep doing this for my own sake. Because mm. Allah has chosen me to do this. Otherwise, He wouldn't have given me this option. Mm. Since He did, I need to keep up. Mm -hmm. So this is how it works for me. Mm. What would you say the, the secret to your success has been? I think... Even there, from just like a logical standpoint. I, I don't think there is any secret. It's just what He... What he thinks is right, like if he has given someone a billion dollar, he knows this guy either gonna use it for his own issues or his own uh, taste, yeah. or he's gonna use it for some causes that relates to other, that relates to um, humans or um, some, uh, some people suffering mm. or something like that. Yeah. For me, if he's given me even a tiny bit of uh, financial freedom, that means he wants me to do the things that I've been doing to get out of my misery. Mm. 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 So for me, I think it always gives me an immense amount of pleasure when I am able to do something for someone not capable at this point. Yeah. So when I try to help a friend, when I try to help someone I don't even know, that smile that gives me, gives me the ultimate pleasure. Yeah. Mm. And that's what it matters for me. SubhanAllah, man. So if I were to ask you a, the, a similar question to that, there's a lot of young Muslims out here. And what you want, like, as a, as a Muslim, like, it's always best. For, like, you don't have complete faith mm -hmm. until you want for your brother what you want for yourself. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if someone's on the, if you're on the path to getting married, your brothers, you would want them to get married just as quickly, right time, everything, right? 
if you have success, you would want the same for your brother, right? So it's a requirement of faith. So many young folks out here, right? Like we're all in this economy, this day and age, everyone is trying to figure out how to get wealthy, how to actually be, afford grocery bills, mm. right? Exactly, like yeah. it's everything is, what advice from a successful perspective, as you are, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. would you give the younger generation? Like whether it's, you got to tie in Islamic advice and then logical advice. Like, what do you do? What advice would you give Muslims how to find success in this dunya and use it for good? What I can suggest is keep that belief firm. Don't get distracted by cheaper products or cheaper uh, lifestyle. But believe that what you're worthy will come to you today or tomorrow. It doesn't matter if, it, if it's not with you today, you're struggling, you're going through hardship, but believe that what you're worthy, what you're meant to have will come to you at the right moment. So keep the head up, keep the chin up and walk with your confidence. Believe, keep the belief in Allah and do your hard work. Do your hard work because this hard work brings success. Never give up and never try to cut a shortcut mm. because, because shortcut is what leads us to worse things, worse phases of life. Shortcuts are not meant to be taken in our belief. Mm -hmm. We are always meant to go the proper way and we are always meant to take the highway. Mm -hmm. So if hardship is getting too burdensome for you, mm. Pray even more. Ask even more. Plead your heart out to Allah because He is the only one who can help us. Mm, subhanallah, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Very well said. Very. What would you say are, in your opinion, because this, honestly, this life is changing so fast. Industries are changing. Um, what would you say are, are some, from your perspective, industries or businesses that people should look into more because you've seen you've seen a lot yeah. right and you know some industries are dying some industries are coming out of nowhere like where do you see life going in terms of business ventures uh, I have always been in um, textile sector I have been in IT sector and technological sectors but what I think is it's not the sector, it's not the uh, job, it's not the um, business you do, it's how you do it. Mm. So if you're good at, um, let's say, handicraft things, do that, do it passion, do it right. Mm. If you're in technology sector, there's so much more to do. Do it the way that it benefits people and it benefits you. What I would suggest is, whatever you do, do it 100% mm. and do it the way that it doesn't uh, affect others negatively and it doesn't affect you negatively. Mm. Mm. Even if you're doing this much, do it 100%. Mm. That's what makes the difference. Mm. You sound like you're very strong on the, um, like you're very confident in what you're saying in terms of like no shortcuts. No shortcuts. Like, no shortcuts. You know what I mean? Like, and I just, while you, while Gorbhai was speaking, I'm just thinking about like prayers, right? Like I'm comparing it to prayers because like, there is no, you can't rush, you can't do a half sujood, you can't like, you can't, during a four rakat prayer, you can't take a shortcut and do three. You have to commit. You just have to commit, you have to do the whole thing properly, properly. Or you just don't get the reward. You could do it, you're just not getting any reward from it. Mm. It's interesting how you took that perspective into your business. Like, really, there's no, you could be successful in anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just how, what's your intention behind it? Yeah. Like, how are you doing it intentionally? That's that's a that, that's like a very simple, clear cut answer for that. Yeah. Where that where do you think that mindset came from? It came from praying actually. Yeah. Because um, you know uh, how I talk about the losses and stuff. Yeah. When I was going through this phase, I wasn't praying at all. Yeah. But then I started praying because I wanted to get a closure, that gave that heartache away yeah. or that took the heartache away. Yeah. So I didn't know if I, if it would help if I prayed regularly. But when I started praying regularly, I realized, like you said, you can't pray your Asr during your praying your Fazr. Yeah. You have to wait and do it 
in the right time. Right. And when I started getting into this habit of praying, I realized that everything comes at its own set time. Mm. I have to be confident, but at the same time, I have to be patient for it to arrive in right time right. because Allah has planned everything for us. Right. Mm. So it gave me the time to think and reflect on what I wanted for my life, what I needed for my life. But at the same time, let me be patient. So, patient in here. Yeah. Mm. That's what it, that's how it started to grow in me. Mm. You know what that reminds me of? Yusuf. Oh, yes. The story of Yusuf. Alhamdulillah. Because Yusuf, peace be upon him, he literally was thrown in a well. He spent nine years in prison. And if you take a step back and look at it from the outside looking in, it seems as though anyone else would have no hope in that situation. How am I going to get any provisions, right? But Allah had a plan. Allah literally had a plan and he became a ruler of Egypt for 80 plus years. Yeah. 80 plus years. Mm -hmm. And that just goes to show that so long as you continue to have faith in Allah and just have the right intentions and do what you need to do, Allah will find a way out for you and bless you with your provisions. Because we have to remember, that's why I love when you said that having success is honestly a test as well because it's so easy for us to think it was us that did it, exactly. right? But it seems as though throughout the entire journey of you getting to where you are, you, you knew it was Allah because you leaned on Allah to get mm -hmm. you there. So I think maybe that is like the, it seems deep, but really it's simple. But throughout the entire process, you just have to trust that Allah is the one that's gonna get, to, to get you to where you need to mm -hmm. be. And that's just leaning on Allah, it's yeah. relying on Allah. Every single story that you read in the Quran, Every single prophet, peace be upon all of them, they had the most trust yeah. in Allah. And that's why they were the closest yeah. to Allah. Even when you think about um, Musa, peace be upon him, he was given a task that he was scared. He had to go and give dawah to the most powerful and villainous person in Egypt. Right. Pharaoh. Right? Yeah. He was scared. He had absolutely nothing. He was honestly wanted for a crime. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And all he had is he had him and he had his brother and he had trust in Allah. And he was able to do it because he put his faith in Allah. His faith, yeah. Because Allah sent down peace the same way Allah sends down your provisions. So if you just have that, it's the formula. Yeah. You're good to go. Perfect. You're good to yeah. go. Yeah. And what that also reminds me of, and I don't want to ramble either, but the one hadith that for me brings me the most peace and every time I remember it, it just grounds me and just just brings me like contentment and tranquility. Is a hadith where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that if you focus on the hereafter, Allah will literally bring forth your affairs. He'll bring peace and contentment in your heart. And everything in this world will just come to you. You don't even have to go out and chase it. Exactly. It'll just come to you. Mm. But if you focus on this dunya, yeah. If you focus on this world, Allah will scatter your affairs and you're going to have to be looking left and right and right and left. They'll place poverty between your eyes exactly. meaning you'll never have enough. Mm. Even if you think that, oh, if I have a million dollars, you'll just want two. You get two million, you'll just want three. You'll never feel like you're rich. It never finish. You'll, it'll never finish. Yeah. And in the end, all you're going to have is what was already written for you anyways. So meaning you spent this temporary life chasing something that was already going to come to you if you just had faith yeah which means that process would have been peaceful but now it was stressful yeah you're content man can i so there's just because we're talking about contentment and just trusting in allah i wanted to like the story of yusuf salam, there's something so hidden in that um story that i didn't even realize it until i saw someone talk about it on instagram what? look how just think about how crazy this is Throughout that story in the Quran, there's one common thing that's constantly brought up, and that's Yusuf's shirt. Shirt? Sure. His shirt. Okay. His brothers, when they threw him in the well, they came back to the father and brought his bloody, uh, talked about his bloody shirt. It was a random shirt. They brought it, showed rips, and said the wolves ate him. The second time, his shirt was used to testify for him, meaning when the if his shirt was ripped from the front, 
he was the he was um, guilty. If his shirt was ripped from the back, he was innocent because of the girl that was trying to seduce him. Mm. The third time the shirt was mentioned is a form of a miracle, meaning when he was being connected with his father again, it was said to him, go take the shirt and put it over your father's eyes and he'll see again. Throughout all of these instances where the shirt is men mentioned, the means have never changed. They all say the same, the same shirt, the same shirt. But what changed? The result every single time. Yeah. So your means on worshiping Allah, your dedication, your routine should never change. But the result will always change based on what Allah wants. So the same shirt, the same dua that you're making, it will be made multiple times by us. It'll, it'll never, the same dua. But what will change is the result of that dua when Allah wants it to. Mm. You know what this reminds me of? Yes. That short story you told me about Astaghfirullah. Mm. No matter what you're praying for, the Astaghfirullah will remove the clouds to, it, to make it easy it, for you to get. SubhanAllah, oh, exactly. Allah. Crazy, right? Yeah, I never thought about that. So beautiful. So, so many meanings. That's hectic. Yeah. So I'm in the process of, inshallah, getting married. Inshallah. And I think that in the past, my whole perception of pursuing marriage was so different. Mm. It was following like what society tells you to do, which is to date, which is to get to know the person mm. for as long as you can. But what I've realized that when you actually put your trust in Allah, that Allah is going to bring you exactly who you want to need, everything becomes so easy. Mm. Because as humans, we're limited. Yeah. You literally never know truly what you want and what you need. Because you, you don't have access to your full mind. You don't know the full contents of your heart. You truly don't even know what you, you need fully. But Allah does. Because Allah knows inside and out of your heart. Yeah. Allah is the controller of your heart. Right? And Allah knows what's in the future. So when I put my faith in Allah, and I trusted in my du'as that Allah will bring that person to me, everything became easy. Everything became smooth. I realized that I actually, you don't need to date someone. And that's why there's so much wisdom in Allah saying that marriage, like once you find that person and you connect on the things that you know you need to connect on, your religiosity, your uh, what you want in, in your morals, your values, there's attraction. Allah will just make it easy. And you're supposed to rush into marriage. Yeah. You're supposed to hasten to get married. It's actually a sin to delay marriage mm. once you know that person. Everything is so easy now. Okay. Inshallah, Allah. inshallah, hopefully a date is set and I get married. But I just wanted to say this because there's a lot of people that may be watching that are constantly making du'as about trying to find that person or they're in that situation where they're dating because they feel like they need to, because I need to get to know that person. Let Allah be the greatest Cupid. Yeah. Let Allah bring that person to you because you will never know what you want and what you need, <laughs> but Allah does. And just have your trust in Allah. But I just want to quickly hear from you, but especially you, because you have, alhamdulillah, a long lasting marriage and you have recently gotten married. What would be your advice in terms of marriage? And what is, what is, what does marriage mean to you? Mm. I can't speak about long marriage because I think the pro the is veteran. here. You know, the veteran, the veteran. Um, for me, I think from what I'm learning, it's tough, right? Like it's, it's, it's also a form of a hardship. And we were talking about this, that you're always seeking for your rewards and you're always seeking for your risk, meaning like marriage, this, kids, um, uh, a job, all these things, you're seeking for it. And then as soon as you get it, that blessing actually turns into a hardship, no matter what. Mm. When, you are, when you are wanting to have a good job, you get the good job, but now that blessing, that job is a blessing, but it turns into a hardship because now you're stressed about how it's performing, how it's doing this. When you're a baby, you want to crawl. Mm. But, and you, as a parent, you want your baby to start crawling. As soon as they start crawling, it's a blessing. But then that crawling becomes a hardship because now you, they can hit their head on the corners of the desks and stuff like this. When the baby is crawling, you as a parent want your baby to walk. Now when they're walking, it becomes even a greater hardship where they're running off to. Mm. Someone can take them, this, mm. this, this. They're not in, the, in your vicinity anymore. So every, literally every blessing, as soon as you achieve it, it becomes a form of a test. Mm. Marriage 
it's a blessing getting into it and then as soon as it the blessing is there you have it in your hand it turns into a test right and that test is given to us because we can earn more blessings mm. obviously or it could be a form of a hardship mm. so for me navigating marriage was pretty hard in the first year because i wanted to get married but then once you got married you have to now face reality like there's things that you have to change about yourself and sometimes when you're stubborn or you have an ego it's hard for you to change this because no one's ever complained about it mm. but your wife knows you in a different way than anyone else in this world does and when they complain about it you have to change it mm. right so it's there's compromises and a lot of those things were, were definitely tough for me but alhamdulillah the the baraka the the idea of having someone who you could share everything with is so amazing because the only one in this world that you do that with the darkest secrets the deepest secrets is Allah mm. and then the next person is literally your wife mm. that's why the relationship between you two are just so strong and I find that to be such a valuable thing can I ask what you look for so when I was getting married so looking for obviously beauty is is something that us men obviously are gonna do right looking for someone who's beauty beautiful and stuff like this but that literally, and I'm not just saying this, like it, this is not just something cliche that I'm saying. That l aspect of beauty literally lasts for, I'll gi give it a couple of months. Because when you see something over and over again, our natural human instincts, that's normal now. Someone else might find that super beautiful, but for you, it's the same thing. You'll get the nicest car, you'll drive it 30 times, and to you, it's now it's a regular car. Mm -hmm. you, you like the car, mm -hmm. but it's natural it's a regular car mm. but what's cool about it, like what's amazing about you getting married for the sake of Allah is that that beauty just increases it's like a car that you drive every time you drive the car you start to figure out more functionalities mm. you start to love more things about it that's why when you look at into the deen in someone when you're looking to marry them their deen grows and your interest for them continues to grow. You mm. find out more about this car. Well, hey, there's a new button now. Like, I never knew about this button. Mm. What does this do? Mm. So Allah continues to place this. this is Allah is the one that places love between your eyes and within your hearts. Human beings are not capable of loving. Like, we're not designed to love anything aside from Allah. Like, literally, that's our our core. Like, our souls were created first. Our hearts were there. And it was designed to love Allah because Allah is the only thing we ever saw. Mm. So if that's the only thing we ever saw before this world, that's the only thing we can remember to love. Mm. We cannot create authentic love in this world. Allah is the one that places it within your hearts and within your eyes. And the thing within your eyes is that other people around you guys might find you guys weird, this, this, this. But why Allah says with it between your eyes, he's not talking about between your two eyes. He's talking about your eyes and her eyes, mm. between your eyes. So it's like, if I look at her, there's something that Allah placed between us that you look and she's just getting more beautiful. But to everyone else, she's getting older. Mm. So Allah places that. So mm. And then the heart? What do you mean within the heart? You said, so he places it between your eyes and in your heart? Within the heart, yeah. So Allah, so Allah, there's a section in the heart that's specifically meant for Allah. You can't put, it's like putting orange juice in a gas, like yeah. for the for the car. The fuel pump it's just not gonna run so Allah placing love inside someone's heart is Allah is there but that person is on the outside layer of the heart meaning that person is still close to the heart mm. but he's not bit that person is not in the the middle of the heart so Allah places the things that you love dearly never inside of your heart but outside of the heart so you love it so you love it Allah. through Allah exactly you love it for Allah okay. yeah so if someone is coming to you and they're like um like I'm in the process of I'm trying to vet people. I'm trying to get married. What should they look for? Like, what are the? Is there like a list? The four things that Islamically is, Dean is number one, character, family, and then beauty. And Allah knows He created us. There's no reason Allah would give men to choose beauty last if it was if it wasn't the most important. If, if beauty was the most important, he would have put it at the top of the list. Mm, he put Deen because Deen never turns old. Deen only gets more beautiful as you learn about it. Meaning the older you have Deen inside of you, the more beautiful it gets. That's why when we listen to older guys talking about Deen, it's so beautiful. Yeah. But when you listen to younger younger people talking about Deen, it's, it's, like, it's okay. like, okay, it's cute. But the older they are, like if there was an older man right now telling us about his Islamic experience, it's so rich. 
it's so beautiful it's like it's like brand new to us yeah. exactly that's experience what, exactly yeah. experience Season. that's why i would say that's why allah says deem first beauty last because beauty no matter what it's going to fade mm. no matter what the 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 logic of the world isn't going to change are right? you going to get exactly. old you're going to get old now switching off the question to you what is a couple of things that you could tell us in terms of how do you maintain a long-lasting marriage because this is an issue in this day and age yeah. Muslims non-Muslims both the way you and Cornell explained it I couldn't do it even um, closer to that <laughs> <laughs> all I can say is we come to this world as an individual and we're gonna go as an individual but meanwhile we are meant to accompany someone we are meant to be together mm. and that person is our soulmate that person is our counterpart mm. so as long as we treat them as a person instead of uh, someone we uh, want in our life as long as we treat them with respect and love that's gonna make things easy mm. because in their heart you're someone coming outside of her circle outside of her known people mm. so it's just as hard for her as it is for you mm. so when when we're getting together it's harder for them and us to you know experience new things together but if we help her if we help uh, our partners they will do the same for us mm. so when we think about it's a hardship right. it's a hardship for them as well right mm. so if we take that into uh, consideration things get easier mm. and day becomes week week becomes month becomes year and year becomes decade mm. i never really took that perspective and meaning like we always look at our hardships like marriage is a hardship but it's literally the same hardship for that person yeah. too exactly yeah empathy that's, that's a good perspective yeah amazing i said we end there yeah that's beautiful i mean this was this was good i feel like some of these podcast sessions that we have it's like you get to talk like it's just a regular conversation between us and you just get to filter out you know like exactly. you get to lose the weight do you have any final thoughts i, I love it him. i loved it thank you so much to all of you for taking me as a part of this podcast bro. you have some good really good experience thank you, you know? very much man Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Big shout out to my boy Nigel right hey. behind the cameras. You know? Made by Nigel. Made by Nigel.